talking about this my agent we met the first time we met was jacksonville right yeah i was gonna say ufc ufc card yeah jacksonville i was like damn this motherfucker is huge (laughs) no i remember seeing y'all and you were with steve mainly i think at that time yeah and we we must have traveled the whole world making content doing crazy it's crazy bro. yeah wish you can get back on youtube but Bro, it's a, it's a blessing to have you, man. No, I appreciate I'm a, it. Bro. I'm, a, I'm a fan, and, and dude, you've you've been crushing it. And and you know what I man. noticed? Like, I feel like, well, I want we'll get into this topic of like social media and like the NFL and all this. Shit, obviously, a ton yeah. of stuff to cover. Um, but you you're like, are you more in the mix than other NFL players? Like, in, when I say in the mix, like showing up to events and kind of like. Yes and no, kind of, right? Um, yeah, I would say, like, because I don't, like, I don't go out. You know what I mean? I'm not in yeah. the clubs or anything that's like what, that. That's not what I mean when I say the mix. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. But, you know, leading to my point, it's like, if I'm going to do shit, it's going to be for a purpose, you know what I mean? And yeah. stay involved in, like, things that I actually enjoy doing. So, like, yeah. back in the day when I was partying and doing my shit, I was out on the scene and trying to get into, you know, as much fun as I possibly can. But now it's just like, you know ufc events i'm always at the ufc events dana's a good friend of mine amazing guy. that whole crew um and then just doing business you know there's a lot there's so much in vegas that you know what i mean it's yeah. just it's unlimited opportunity so for me it's like i got a lot of you know a lot of great people around me i'm you know ruben's one of my good friends he's with fanatics and yeah. i'm with fanatics now so i'm just like I'll, I'll step out and you'll see me boom i'm out for like an hour and a half two hours and then I'm back at the house. Like, you're I'm like a me. homebody, bro. Yeah, you're so, like me. <laughs> For I'm sure. in and out, bro. I'm in and out. I'm doing my thing, and then I go straight back to the crib. So, yeah. And you're you're that kind of way with, with football, even. I feel like, because I saw an interview you talking, I think you were Strickland talking about this, but yeah. you're you're like a 24-7 guy. You're not like an off-season, on-season kind of guy. You're like always kind of locked in, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I got that. You know, I started after my second year. Um, I actually, ironically, I love coming to LA. I got a different type of love because I got sober out here. So yeah. that was about almost four years ago. It's coming up. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I got cleaned up out here. So I'm 24 seven, like literally I come out to LA in my room, you know, I have my nutritionist call the hotel, yeah. boom, I need my, I need an extra, extra fridge. So I get all my meal prep and I got a company out here and no matter where I'm at, I'm always locked in um, 100%. So right now it's different. I got this knee and then I got I got to get my thumb tomorrow. Yeah. I, dude, so, I appreciate you coming like this because obviously yeah. your yeah, dedication is different. No, bro. yeah. I just, I, I try to stay, well, it's not try. I, I just stay dialed in 100% of the time because I know what it takes to get to that level. But to stay there and to keep improving and find a way to improve, bro, it literally requires 100% of your attention. And if you don't have people around you that understand it, like, yeah. you know, they won't they won't understand. So that's why my wife and my close-knit friends, like, they know what I want and know what I'm chasing. So yeah. no matter what I'm doing, bro, I'm going to be 100% in. On, on that note, you got what, your fourth round drafted? Yeah, right? fourth round draft pick. Um, is that like, is that, obviously that's that's not like first round, all this, like, yo, this guy's the guy. <laughs> You, yeah. you like you're building yourself into something though that do you think you probably knew you were going to do this but do you think people thought you were going to be able to do this um no you know i don't i don't think so i think you know i've always had a crazy belief in myself you know at the end of the day i love what i do like i've been obsessed with football and sports since literally the day i was born so yeah. um yeah i didn't know it would get to this level but the thing is is like i know i could be even better and i know i could you know only keep growing if i keep doing the right shit. so yeah for me bro it's like it, it worked out the way it's supposed to. Like, I wasn't supposed to be a first-round pick. I wasn't supposed to get that much money out the gate. Because yeah. when I came to the league, bro, I was wild as <laughs> and Like, I wasn't ready for all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had to really earn it. So now, like, I'm going into my sixth year, which is crazy um, how time flies. But, you know, I know I, I'm grateful for it now. So, yeah. like, I understand what it took to get here. And I worked my ass off every single day, you know, to get to this point. So if I would have got it right out the gate, you know what I mean? I don't know how it, I would have reacted to it. So... Um, it makes me appreciate it a lot more. So, yeah, yeah man, it's it's special for sure. Arguably one of the best defensive players in the league. No doubt. Um, yeah. I guess Bosa got it over you in the rookie. Yeah, yeah, it was me. It was him, and then I was second. Do you, do you think? Damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you, do you like? I, I mean, he's going into the he's going into the bowl, so obviously yeah. it's going to be a little different. But do you think you'd get defensive player of the the year? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm up for it. I mean, it's five of yeah. us this year. Um, you know, I, in my personal opinion, like every single year I get better and it's not just stats, you yeah. know, that's one thing, but just as a player and overall impact. So, um, 
I'm willing to run that race. You know what I mean? I, yeah. At the end of the day, I know my time is coming. And I know I'm going to get that recognition and I'm starting to get that recognition. So for me, um, it's just trusting the process and continuing to find that little 1% I can get better at. And that's the beauty in it. Like guys, like, you know, for me, I talk to my brother about this all the time because he's like, you know, he's my biggest, you know, supporter. He yeah. just gets, goes on Twitter. He's pissed off. He's like, no, I'm <laughs> yeah, telling you, Max yeah. is better than, he's been saying this since well, day stats, one. stats, I mean. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But, and then Rachel's the same way. My wife, like she will go to war. You know what I mean? And all my friends, they, they know what I do and know what I put yeah. in. And like, I've been on teams, you know, I've been in the league five years. I made the playoffs one time. And the fact that, it, you know, I've been about, you know, three times in a row pro bowl. I've been multiple all yeah. pros. Like I'm getting recognition. And I'm not in the playoffs every year. So I know once I'm starting to consistently be in the playoffs, um, you know, it's just going to keep going and going. It just starts with the work. So for me, it's like, I, I told my brother this, I'm like, Jokic, it took Jokic like eight years for yeah. everyone to fully recognize it. Like, no, nah, he's the best player in the league. And for me, that's, you know, that's what I look, I could see it like maybe two, two, three years from now. When they look back, they'll be like, okay, he's got every stat. Yeah. He's got all that. I think it's people like, are starting to really see it, though, for real. No, for sure. And, yeah. and I know that it just, that's what pushes me more because I know there's another level um, I can go to. So if it takes eight, 10 years, I'm willing to run that race. It's, so It's got to be tough, though, because like, football is such a massive, massive team sport. Like, yeah. Because for you to get the kind of looks like to that point where like you do kind of like you said, have to be going to the playoffs, have to be going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, do you think the Raiders are – are like ready or do they need a quarterback strong quarterback um you know I, obviously you know we're not there yet we're right. eight and nine this year we had a coaching change halfway through the year yeah and we still you know we turned it around like once once we had the coaching change and had ap come in like the whole thing changed so um you just seen like we went to arrowhead and beat you know beat the team is about to be in the super bowl yeah um with Huge. a rookie quarterback like that doesn't happen yeah. um our defense went from bottom of the league Second half of the year, we ended up being the number one defense in the league. And overall, we ended up being a top 10 defense. So, um, yeah, you know, we need pieces. We know we need pieces, a few pieces to add. Um, you know, the quarterback deal, like Aiden came in, did a great job. Yeah. I know they're going to draft someone probably um, and have them compete. But, yeah, I feel like we're now, you know, now that we brought AP back, we have a chance to keep building on what we already started. So we got a lot of great pieces. It's just about adding a few more. And then having a full season, you know, with everyone on the yeah. same page, and were you ser were you serious about if if Pearson didn't come back, you'd leave the Raiders? <laughs> um, I mean, you know that that whole deal. There's there's a lot of things behind the scenes that went into it, yeah. but um, you know, I at the end of the day, like I, I stand on what I said. Yeah. Um, you know, there's obviously emotion that go into it. You know, yeah, there yeah. could have been a different way I went about it, but at the end of the day, I, you know, I stand on what I said. I'm about elevating and winning and getting better every single year and i've shown the team and i've shown everybody my teammates that i'm doing that every single day and every single year i go out there i get better and i want the organization to feel the same way yeah and that's basically what my message was like listen let's go in the same direction i'm doing this I'm literally my leg is about to fall off yeah, and yeah. like i'm still playing out of my hands or my hands destroyed like but i'm not going to stop until we get to where we go i want everyone not Elevate. just the players but the organization everyone to feel the same way because i'm trying to win bro like that's that's all that matters at the end yeah. of the day and if you win all the other comes with it so that's kind of my message you know at the end of the day people had their opinions on it but for me i wasn't coming from a bad place right. everyone knows on the planet i want to be a raider i got it tatted on me yeah you got i yeah. never want to leave i'm you know i'm locked in for another three years at least um at the current moment so it's like it wasn't like screw yeah, the Raiders I'm leaving not. it was like no nah, let's get everyone on the same page listen we got AP we're going yeah. the right direction don't don't change it up now and try yeah. to go back to square one we've already tried that and did it why don't we give it a chance and let's see what happens so that's kind of you know what my message was is this the same knee that you injured was this like week three you got fucked up yeah so week two in Buffalo I slammed my knee in the turf and my bursa blew up so my whole knee was just filled with fluid and and then the only way it heals is if you rest and it's week two. So there's no resting. Fuck. So literally every week for 16 weeks, I was draining. Bro, it. That's that that's different. It was bro. It was terrible. And you still performed at such a high level. Yeah. And do, you, do you think you would have like, I mean, what, what, what are people looking for next season? And like, are you just going to be even more of an animal? I don't get it. No doubt. It, it starts with the work for sure. But I don't like to think, you know, if I was healthy, it would have been this. Like I know what I, when I went on the field, I was ready to go. So regardless it right. was that foundation build up to it, bro. I start in January and I, you know, the season ends in January. So it's like I said, it's all year round. And um, I was prepared for it. It was different. I had to adjust. I couldn't practice as much as I wanted. I had to do a couple different things. But like I talk about all the time and this is what helped me this year was like 
you know, everything happens for a reason. And there's more than one street to get to where you want to go. Like I had to go down an exit. I had to go to a different, yeah. you know, different routes. I couldn't do all the same things. But at the end of the day, mentally, I had to stay locked in. I couldn't be like, all right, well, I can't do this in practice. It's okay if I, you know, take a step back. People understand, like, I refuse to let that get into my mind. Like, yeah. I'm going find to find a way to still put in the work, but be ready once it comes Sunday. But it was just, you know, I feel like mentally it, it took me to another level, like helped me build up to a different level this year because I had to battle a lot of shit and I was hurting, but yeah. um, we still found a way. Bro, it's yeah, no different, doubt. different mentality, man. I appreciate it, bro. Um, okay, so do, do you... F I guess I'm really kind of curious, though, like your childhood and your, your come up, man. Yeah. Like, and we'll talk a little about the addiction stuff yeah. after. But where, where did you where do you really come from? Like, what is your childhood? Like, what is your family like? What is, are they here? Are they supporting you? Are they? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I'm originally from Lapeer, Michigan, out in the country, like yeah. right outside of Flint, uh, Michigan. Um, super country town. I mean, yeah. I have Hadley Elementary on the school is trailer park right next to it out in the sticks um but it was awesome like all my good friends all my closest friends we literally all lived on the same street we grew up playing basketball football everything together so yeah my parents are together they're still together yeah um you know i grew up middle low middle class um but yeah my family did well and then um around 2008 i think it was 2007 the whole market crashed and my my dad was in real estate yeah and um we lost everything we lost a house um and my dad left like he was trying to find work basically and so it was my mom and my brother and sister at the crib and we were just waiting to figure out where we we're going to move to because we. what couldn't. age are you here i was like 10 years old okay i was like 10 so i was like i was sick to my stomach because like i didn't want to leave michigan at all um and me you know obviously my siblings felt the same way but my you know my grandparents were out in texas so he was looking in texas a little bit for work and then he was looking in florida a little bit but my grandpa was in texas we move out there right as I was going into middle school. So I went to middle school and high school out in Texas. Um, and then, yeah, it was, it was on from there, yeah. but it was, it was tough, bro. Like my parents, you know, the one thing about them, like they've been like, my mom's been working since she was 10 years old. Like she's an immigrant. She came from Yugoslavia. Yeah. She's Serbian and Albanian. So I'm half that. Um, you know how to talk shit in a Serbian working. or what? Not, not fully. I know a little <laughs> bit, but I'm not going to act like I speak it like yeah. that. But yeah, you know, uh, my mom's a worker. My dad's a worker. He grew up with a single mom. Um, you know, my mom had seven brothers and sisters growing up in, you know, inner city Detroit, yeah. um, as immigrants. So like I come from that background, um, you know, my parents made it a lot easier on us. They made it, you know, there were struggles and shit like that, but they've never let us feel it. Um, so I appreciate the hell out of them for it. And they were working all the time. So it was really like most of the time my sister was little, but it was me and my brother just yeah. doing whatever. And we were, we were wild, but, um, yeah, my upbringing, bro, it was, it was good. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say like. It was the worst childhood yeah. or whatever. There was definitely adversity, but we made it work. And uh, my parents, you know, did their best to not let us feel it's it. It's got to be see. I feel like because people who people who really excel at anything, any sport, anything really, they seem to see kind of like the hard work it takes to at some point in family to be like, oh, damn. And then they kind of adopt that sort of mentality in order to in their life, in order to reach their goals. Right. Yeah. So at what point were you like, obviously, you're a specimen, you're what are you like six four six five? how tall six, are you? Five, yeah. yeah you tall yeah <laughs> and and you were just like like when did you realize football you could really do it you know that's a good question I, I really was a late bloomer um in high school even like I was a middle linebacker my whole life I was short stocky chubby kid like growing up yeah and then going into my last year um of high school I grew like four inches so come up it was crazy <laughs> bro I'm up. like let's fucking go come up. no I was so hyped so I got a lot bigger um, I was goofy, like my body hurt, everything was yeah. like hurting. But um, yeah, I literally just, I, it was nobody coming after me. I had no film playing DN or anything, but they moved me to DN my last year. So the coaches were like, listen, just do what we tell you, you're gonna get an offer. So I'm like, that's all I want. I just wanna play D1. It doesn't matter where it is, I wanna play D1, so. Um, I just wonder, is it like, are you just like playing and you just you start playing you realize like well i'm just better than everyone not not better you know as a person but yeah. just better in the sport that's the, bro that's the thing in high school bro like my senior year i wasn't that good like that was my first year playing dn i didn't know what the f i was doing yeah so when i got that eastern offer i got it right before my senior year i literally just went to a camp and they seen how i moved in they're like we're offering you so they were d1 they were the literally the worst team in d1 at the time they're like one and 11 i'm like that's all i need i'm originally from michigan i'm like this is perfect so yeah. i took that offer went there and i went to eastern i was like literally six five two twelve 
when I showed up. I was scrawny. Holy shit. I was skinny. Yeah, I was really skinny. I'd lost weight before I went there. Like I had a weird thing where I wanted to, I don't know. I was playing basketball all the time and I wanted to cut that baby fat when I grew. You wanted so to you wanted to look I, I want to be lean. <laughs> bro, I, they showed up, they're like, bro, what are you doing? Like they That's were funny. freaked out, bro. They thought I had a stomach virus or something. Like I had a bug. I wasn't eating. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, I cut the bad weight and I'm gonna put the good weight. They're like, they were concerned, but it worked out, bro. I went there, I redshirted my first year, um, and I won Scout Team Player of the Year. And I just went in practice every day, just figuring out how to play DN, and I was just killing dudes. Yeah. And uh, that's where I got my confidence. And then two years later, I ended up being a starter. And then that first year as a starter, I took off. Yeah. And I, you know, I had double digit sacks, um, first team all conferences like that. And that was my redshirt sophomore year. So after that, I was like, Nah, this is real. Like I'm one of the. I know I could be one of the best. And then agents and all this shit start coming after yeah. me and things like that. So. Once I got to that point, like I was like, okay, now it's real. Like I always believed I could do it, but once I finally put it together on the field, um, that's where my confidence, you know, went out the roof. And I was like, no, I could really do this. Shit. And then I played one more year at Eastern, and then I left a year early. Um, went to the draft, got a combine invite, and then. The rest what, is what, what do you think? What do you think separates like good? Obviously, everyone in the NFL is good, yeah, right? Because they're sure. in the NFL. Yeah. But good and like great players. Is this speed? Honestly, no, in the NFL, it's everybody, like you said, everyone, it's the best of the best. Yeah. All the best players in the world. So everyone's got talent. Everyone are freak athletes shit like that. But I've said it since day one, like after my second year, once I got my life cleaned up, got everything together and started just going straight Kobe mentality with everything, nutrition, taking care of my body, sleep, training, like just doing everything above and beyond. Like yeah. I literally every single category and it's still you know i still do it to this day even at a higher level but that's what separates the best guys everybody's good but who's going to put in that little extra work every single day in every category and those are the best players and i talk to all of them like i go to the pro bowl and i just pick people's brains and yeah. all the best guys are the same way so we talk to each other at a different level and they could understand it but there's some dudes who are just freaking natures but never end up being reaching that potential because the they mindset. relied on talent i yeah. didn't rely off talent i didn't i wasn't even a good player in high school like it, i had to work for it every single day so now it's like i'm not like just relying off talent like i'm quick athletic like that but i had to build my body up uh and get to that point so it's that's what separates guys it's, it's the just mindset, mindset yeah. bro 100 percent. yeah i mean it makes sense at, at greatness in any category is like how bad do you want it and how like focused are you on it 100 percent. so it's interesting too because you obviously came from the the addiction it was the alcohol right yeah yeah mainly overcoming that like at what point did that start um honestly from day one like when i started in high school um oh you were drinking in high school yo hell yeah wow. and the first time i ever drank in high school i was like I'm in love like this. <laughs> I could go up to any chick and talk now. Like I was like, I was a middle child redhead. Like, yeah, I wasn't the most confident kid growing up. And uh, yeah, so once I had a first drink of alcohol, I was like, this is, I this feel is like it. a new yeah. man. <laughs> so yeah, it's just kind of, you know, what it was for me. So I went to college, I went to Eastern all the way across the country by myself, basically. Yeah. And now it's like, fine. this is real freedom. I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> and it was the worst thing for me at the time. Um, so it got worse and worse. And uh. You know, I was able to manage it to a certain extent, but I was always that dude that was too fucked up and yeah. uh, didn't know how to handle my shit. So, um, you know, I was able to stay afloat, stay afloat. And then once I got to the league, it just got worse and worse. Um, and then it's not like college. Like, you're not at, you know, you're not at school all year round like that. Like, once the season's over, do whatever the fuck you want. I could do whatever. But after my rookie season, then it just got worse. Like, I couldn't, yeah. I was completely out of control. Um, I had no limit on what I could do. So, like... I was just partying and doing all doing the most at all times. So we well, got to a point like it was it was March 11th. That was when I got sober um, in 2020. And I literally I called my girl, called my agent. I'm like, listen, I need help. Like I woke up one morning. I was literally beat, like sweating my ass off. Like I felt like death. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. Like I'm going to literally run myself to the dirt. Yeah. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, like football is my purpose. Like I know my purpose is bigger than just football, but um there's no other thing on earth I'd rather be doing. There's nothing that is more, you know, I can give more of an influence on other people and help people. And yeah. it's just part of the story. So yeah, bro, honestly, it was after my, after my rookie season got way out of control. And then I was like, yeah, I need, I it's need interesting though, how like it's cause, cause not, cause I, I, I watched interviews and stuff that you've done. Yeah. And you think even work ethic wise, like 
you you know it was interesting saying how it was one of the worst things like getting alcohol and be you know getting that addiction but yeah. in in a weird way kind of how most things end up happening is is also becomes one of the best things for you because you learn how to deal with it and you learn to overcome it yeah because i think that's what all this stuff kind of comes down to everything you're saying it all comes back to the same idea of like you realizing obviously okay this is what i really want am i willing enough and mentally strong enough to say no to the that's me up and not getting me closer there yeah and that mentality like to get out of like an addiction because alcohol is a real addiction Hell yeah. to get out of that real addiction into and to put yourself in what you really should be doing yeah. that same sort of like mental fortitude it takes to say no to something that's so easy or so like pulling you yeah is why you're able to like probably continue to excel at the the rate that you're excelling at yeah no doubt and, and that's the thing it's so accessible nowadays and it's so like normal oh, yeah you see it on it's you know every football commercial there's a bud light or a yeah. whiskey or whatever it is like you see it all the time and it's become normalized um and for me like that's my superpower my guy you know my sponsor he he told me that since day one he's like your sobriety is your superpower he's like there's nobody doing what you're doing on a daily basis and I live in Las Vegas. I got a million bad influences oh, around me. Um, but the fact that I can stay locked in and stay dialed in um, and keep bettering myself as a person, like I'm not perfect, bro. Like I still have a million things I got to get better at. But I know like on a daily basis, I'm getting better and working towards that. So um, staying sober is number one before anything. If I stay sober, I got a chance. So yeah. um, that's that's all that matters. I wake up every day. Thank God I'm here and that I'm sober and clean and from there, you know, from then yeah. on, I can go and, and just keep improving. So well, I was watching a podcast on uh, Andrew Huberman's podcast with, with David Goggins. They were talking about like a part of the brain that actually like expands or shrinks based on you doing things that that you don't want to do. Yeah. Like so. So at some point, obviously, like don't want to do it in this sense, like, OK, alcohol is there. You saying like physically saying no to this yeah. is sort of thing like expanding in your brain. It's also related to like dopamine and, and your ability to like overcome. Yeah. Like the greater it becomes. So yeah. the more you say no to things that you really want to do, or the more you say yes to things that you don't want to do, yeah. the better you kind of become at that. And I think a problem in today's world is like most people just say yes to because it's easy yeah. and they say no to because it's too hard. Yeah. 100%. So I think the more that you you do those things that you don't want to do and you say no to the things that you really want to do, yeah. the better you are just as a person, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. Like it's a, it's crazy because it's a real like physical thing that happens in the body. Yeah. And it's like the more you practice it, because I could I could recognize that for myself. Like when I kind of start falling off on certain things, like diet or like sleeping at the right times or doing all the things that made me good at what I'm good at. Obviously, yeah. it's way different than playing football. Just yeah. physically looking good, being able to perform at a certain level. You, I, I, I can look back and go, damn, the times that I just was like, ah, uh, I'll take this easy road. Yeah. The easier it is to start taking the easy road. No, hundred percent. So how do you how do you like not fall back into something like that? Yeah, I think it really, it just comes down to habits. I feel like that's anything in, you know, in life, like it's routine. You know, once you start doing something over and over again, like you said, like once you get comfortable waking up at 9 a.m. instead of getting up at six, yeah, um, you just become more comfortable and you become normal. Your body's used to, you know, taking the easy route. So that's, I'm glad you said that too, because that's a huge part of what got me here too. Like even in the off season, all literally all year round, I, I get up, I'm 545, in the building by 6 15 6 30 every morning and there's nobody around like this off season this like nobody has to be there till april i'm yeah. in there bright and early and i stri literally do that just so i wake up and i know i'm already a step ahead nobody yeah. else is doing this in the off season i talk to everybody yeah guys around the league shit like that nobody's doing it because it's easier to sleep till 8 a.m but i do it it's i'm already a step ahead and it's a win right yeah. out the gate like i'm getting up at 5 45 in, in january and going in the building i'm like nobody's doing this but over time you keep doing that you feel so much better I, i'm done i'm putting in six hours of work and it's noon and i'm going back home to my girl i can do whatever the fuck i want the rest of the day yeah. eat, have my meal prep i eat at the same exact time every day i go to bed at the same time and i feel so much better the next day but if i sleep in at nine work out at 10 30 then i'm already three hours behind of how i usually work and then you know what i mean i can't i can't operate that way but i have like a addictive personality i'm obsessive about doing the right way so the way i don't fall back into that is just stay in my routine religiously yeah. and it's not easy like some days i'm like Fuck, i do not want to get up at 5 30 yeah, right not now supposed to be it's That's terrible the point. Yeah. but i know at the end of the day i'm gonna wake up and get up and do my i'm gonna feel 10 times better about myself and i know i got better and took a you know took a step forward so yeah um, well i really noticed what it comes I, down I saw to. you do an interview with sean and you were talking about doing things that 
you don't always do to kind of like maybe get some sort of an edge. Yeah. Right. Cause yeah. you started doing some like fighting. You were like sparring with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. It's <laughs> wild, bro. That was probably the crazy I've done. Um, sparring Strickland. Uh, but for sure, like I've been boxing for over two and a half years now. So yeah. that's something I, I put into my training and it's helped a ton with, with football. Um, his pass rush at the end of the day is hands, eyes, feet, yeah. coordination, timing, distance. Like it's all, you know, relative. So, um, boxing is huge for me. So once I got, you know, I had to, it took two years to go fight Strickland. I was like, yeah. I'm not going to go in there and get f murdered, Yeah. but I still, you know, he kicked my, ass, but yeah. you know, I was able to at least hold my own and land some shots and, you know, take some shots and defend myself a little bit. But yeah, you know, doing that's uncomfortable. Like it makes me better. You know, every yeah. single day I'm looking for something to like, all right, what am I going to do that? I really don't want to do. I can sit here and chill and relax. Like how can I improve myself? And Every single year, I'm looking for more, you know, just finding that 1% in every category, whether it's doing Epsom salt bath 40 minutes every night. Like, I added that this year. And like, bro, hold on. I do it every night, bro. These motherfuckers make fun of me. Everyone makes fun of me. Every I talk night. about doing baths because I put candles and shit. Oh, hell funny. yeah. My <laughs> damned. I'm bro, fucking, I'm Zen the mode. same person. Every single night, bro. I, and I <laughs> added that this year, bro. It's, it's changed. Okay. I love it, bro. I've talked about it. this on podcasts and I got flamed on this. I do really, really hot Epsom salt baths. I yeah. swear to you, bro, I get my best ideas ever. I'm telling you. It might be a blood flow thing and obviously like the recovery thing, <laughs> yeah. but bro, I get the best ideas. I'm telling you, bro. I literally have a setup. I have this big tub in my, in my bathroom. I have my iPad, watch my <laughs> film. I have my laptop and like... I literally just sit there. It's my favorite. It's my favorite time, bro. I, Whoa, I swear that's to God. crazy. Yeah, but it's like like that. I have a whole recovery like facility basically at my house now. I got the the sauna, the cold yeah. plunge, the Epsom salt baths, all that shit. The Normatex, you game ready. You ever use red light? I have. We have a red light at the facility now. Yeah, so I'll show I, you. I, I got light. everything you just mentioned. I have here. I have a yeah. room over there. I got the sauna back there. The cold hot tub it's over the here. Best, bro. It's Obviously, the best. I'm not you know defensive no, player it, of the year I mean, or anything but it doesn't matter hey i'm telling you bro once i'm done playing football i'm gonna still be doing the same yeah and yeah bro it helps like even though you don't feel it after the first week or two weeks or whatever over time you just you realize okay why do i feel a little bit sharper why do yeah. i feel better physically and you just do it over and over and over again like i've been doing it for like i said over three and a half years now yeah i can't tell you how good i feel compared to when I, I was do, just thugging I, it when I was young. I think it all comes back to that mental piece of like just doing the things that are difficult. Because all that stuff is like it takes a little time. Yeah, the sauna is oh, kind of yeah. nice. The cold punch is not nice. No. Like, oh, But all those things that are like, but I have to do this. Obviously, there's tons of physical benefits. But yeah. I think the biggest benefit in all always comes back to the mind. 100%. For sure. And, and, it, and it's real because I remember when I like cold tubs, I used to, all right, I'm going to start at three minutes or I'm going to start at two minutes, whatever. Now it's I do it do, like off season during the season. I do full rounds of hot tub, cold tub, full 10 minutes submerged in the cold tub every single day. You do 10 minutes? Twice. I do seven. Twice God. Ten, do minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, bro. 36 degrees, freezing my Are off. you up to here? No, I'm like, well, okay, basically okay, shoulder, yeah. but yeah. basically. But Your yeah. big ass probably don't fit the cold yeah. tub. Yeah, oh, barely. I'm yeah. slumped in there. But I remember when I first started, I was like, there's no way I could do more than two minutes. But over like... Two months later, I'm like, damn, I could stay in here for five. Yeah. And then it turns into eight. And now I'm doing it. kind of goes numb. Time. And you're kind of like, I could chill. Oh, it's all mental. Yeah. You can, you, the, the hardest part is just getting down in there. Yeah. Once you're in, you're like, okay, I can, yeah, yeah. I could do this. But yeah. So who wins in a street fight, you or Sean Strickland? A street fight? Yeah. I mean, if Sean Strickland should beat me in a, yeah, in a yeah. street fight, there's no doubt. I'm not going to say I'll beat him. He's a killer, though. Like that dude, like, oh, he's a killer for and sure. And sparring, too. Like, we did it. It was like NFL films. They hit me up. They're like, "Hey, we want to, you know, we know you're boxing and stuff. You got anybody, you know, that we could have going in like and spar a little people? bit?" Like this is like a joke. <laughs> yeah, like they were like, "Yeah, just to get a little bit of footage, whatever." I'm like, "The only guy I know who's a real fighter is Strickland because I've known him since like his come up. I went to the Apex. I yeah. met him a couple years ago, and he's like notorious for being an awful sparring partner. <laughs> he just goes in there and beats the shit out of people. <laughs> but I was like, I, you know, we've talked about it before. But I'm like, Fuck it. I was like, we got cameras and." Shit. I got nowhere to hide. I'm like, it's another yeah, you, being uncomfortable. Yeah, you filmed it. Oh, yeah. We did three three minute rounds, bro. And it was, I left that, but my nose was, he was, yeah. I, the only thing I hold like prideful about is that I gave him a little, little bloodshed. I cut his lip and I was like, that's all I that's needed. It, that's it. That's all I needed. It. That's it. Fuck. Landed like three punches. That's all I needed. It no, was fun though, bro. It was fun. Damn. No, props for that. Cause that, that's, I mean, you could step completely out of something that like, you know, it's not football, right? It's something no. you're so, I mean, you did two years of it, but with someone who's been doing it like damn near his whole life, whole it's, it's kind of like... Yeah, it's like him coming out on the football field and trying to block me. 
You know yeah. what I mean? It's like yeah. if he if he blocks me one time, I, that's embarrassing. Speaking so, of that, yeah. you I've seen a clip of you. Uh, you just call? Do you call everyone like little boy? You just disrespect people on the field or what? It's pretty <laughs> no, funny, that, man. No. Like I saw this. You, you saw that clip. I mean, oh, you're, of course. you're you obviously you're in it, but of course. Is it like I saw that guy being like, "Yo, he's kind of mean." He's like, "What the? Yeah, f- did you see that?" Sh-? Of course, of course. Um, yeah, like last off season, they did the the quarterback came out, and I didn't even know. That was coming out they did a whole thing on Mahomes and I was just with Mahomes the whole time and kept punching him after the pl- the ball was thrown and he's like he was so mad but like every time we go against each other I'm just trying to with him and get in his head and it doesn't matter like Mahomes is one guy and it's obviously Patrick Mahomes but like you can ask any quarterback I do it to everybody they just happen to catch it and then this year they got me doing it to Minshew as well yeah, yeah, yeah. and I told everybody I'm like bro go ask the quarterbacks and practice what I do to them like I do it every single day, all year, and that's just kind of what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. My job is to be a quarterback destroyer and an yeah. offense destroyer. You got to get in their head too. And the quarterback's running the whole show, so I'm gonna try to fuck with them, make them as uncomfortable as possible, literally all game. Yeah, yeah. Did you see? Uh, did you see Mahomes and Kelsey uh, with the the kicker at the Ravens? Yeah. What yeah. Is, what's what's up with that? Well, Tucker, you could tell Tucker was on the wrong side. Like when you warm up in the beginning of the game, like before the game, yeah, you got your Chiefs side, you got your Ravens side, you got the Raiders and Chiefs, whatever. And he was on the opposite side with all his shit lined up, and it was on the Chiefs side. And they just, uh, you could tell they're like, Get the fuck out of here. I've been that way too, though. Like when guys are running around or trying to be on our side, or like you could tell they're trying to, like, you know what I mean? Oh, just so you like, think he was trying to with them? Hundred percent. That's oh, why they they're were... irritated. Like, bro, get your shit out of here. Like it's our fucking side. You don't That's think they're bullies? No, not at no, all. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a kicker or it's a quarterback. They'd probably do the same shit. But yeah, yeah, guys try to do that shit all the time, especially pregame. Like, I don't, like, I have my section. I'm, I'm doing my warm up and stuff, like the corner of the front corner of the end zone. If there's any dudes on the other team walking around, like, or trying to warm up or do some over there, like, that's not going to fly. Like, yeah, get so, the f- out of here. Yeah, get the f- out of here. Your side's over there. So, yeah. Yeah. What do you think about uh, in the NFL? There's, I guess there was a, uh, there was an announcer who got kicked off announcing from some NBC pro- broadcast because he was like, yo, why do we keep showing f-ing Taylor Swift in the box? Did you see? Because this, no, look, I, this is a, this is, it's getting interesting. Yeah. It's very social media-ish, like kind very, of. So, so what do you think about that guy getting removed? Because I guess he's not in the playoff, uh, no more commentating because of that sort of comment I guess he made. I mean, they push it hard, especially in the beginning of the year. That's all they talked about. Um, they still talk about it, obviously, but Bro, it's, I mean, it is Taylor Swift and it's the Super Bowl champ. So it's like, yeah. I mean, what else are they going to talk trying about? Trying to get those views. They're up. trying to get the views. It's a business at the end of the day. So yeah. I'm not surprised by it. But yeah, as a football guy, I would, you know, I don't like seeing <laughs> all they talk about is Taylor Swift. I'm like, bro, I want to watch the football game. But it's no disrespect to her. It's just it's funny. Just, like, I'll hear girls. They'll be like, oh, uh, Taylor Swift's boyfriend. I'm like, what? The are you talking about yeah it's crazy i'm like that's all that's the best tight end yeah. in the league bro like it's pretty put some funny respect on his name but i think like i mean they're probably they're probably somewhat getting a little bit of a new audience like probably getting le- legit more girls maybe to watch maybe that was their goal i don't know i don't know because like, i remember be, set up i don't know set up but i'm just like they're doing it on purpose for sure for the views oh, and yeah. they're definitely getting a whole new audience to go be like oh what what's this because yeah. that's her boyfriend yeah Even i mean viewership like, in the league is the highest it's been crazy this year by yeah. far so i mean it's not a coincidence i don't think you, so. damn it's i smart. just think it's funny though man when yeah, i see it's, it it's so much bro it's so much it's funny though seeing seeing how everyone reacts to it some people hate it and think it's the worst thing in the world yeah. I'm like, bro relax it is what it is 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 uh is did did you see the the AI images? What the Taylor Swift one? <laughs> <laughs> bro. I mean the internet, bro. Nowadays is it's undefeated. It's, it's undefeated, so bro. weird. Dude. The Andy Reid one had me <laughs> crying tears, bro. <laughs> actual actual tears. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is going on? Do they do like? I'm wondering, like in the in the lock, are like you guys talking about this shit? Like in the lock, like behind the scenes type? Not really. No. One, no. No one really cares. I mean, the players don't care. They're not watching. They game broadcast right of course shit like that so yeah nobody really cares yeah yeah I, but i wonder if they're like behind the scenes being like oh what the this because like so much talks about taylor swift now in the nfl yeah, it's like a spectacle but I it's mean, crazy they're winning still so so do you have the n-word pass or what because i feel like you almost said it oh, on a fucking video God, i swear dude i swear <laughs> i saw a video of you in the locker room and i was like this guy what am i, am I? no i know what you're talking about I know what you're talking. You're talking about the video with the yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, no, I don't have the pass. Okay. No, I don't use it. I don't okay. think that's the most corny thing on the planet when a white dude tries to use it and act like it's normal. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it, that's the funny they thing. They definitely about accept it. you into the community, 100%. Yeah, I mean, a lot of. Yeah. Some of the closest people in my life are black yeah. dudes. Yeah. Some some of the coolest people I know, same thing. So I'm not trying to be like anybody. I'm 100% yeah. myself. But yeah, I think it's just, I think it's hilarious because how it all happened. Like I'm literally just having a normal day. Yeah. I practice in the morning. Raiders people come up to me. Hey, uh, you take this video, you know, get the people hyped for the game. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Yeah. I, they do it all the time. I'm like, what's up, y'all? Boom. I'm taking the video. <laughs> I think he's funny as hell. I'm taking the video. And I, bro, sometimes I stutter. Like, my brother stutters. I stutter. And I was like, y'all need to show up. And I, like, I like stuttered when I said need. And <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think two things of it. Like, I literally took the video. Boom. Handed yeah. it off. Appreciate y'all. Went in. Took a shower. Go to meetings. I'm just two hours later. I have meetings. Not even thinking about it at all. Yeah. All of a sudden... I get out of meetings. I check my phone. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going on, bro? My phone is blowing up. And so I look at the video. I'm like, <laughs> I just start laughing. And all these people are like, bro, what the fuck? Saying a million things. I'm like, bro, you can't do anything nowadays. Like, yeah. I know I didn't say it or try to say it or whatever. I'm like, bro, I'm literally taking a video for the Raiders. Yeah. Like, how, but I just thought it was funny, bro. I was dying laughing. So, yeah, you know, that whole situation was hilarious, and I was yeah. totally not expecting it yeah. <laughs> at all, bro. It was it was hilarious. So, what do you have the most fun doing? That's not football. That's not football. Um, I mean, I'm pretty simple. At the end of the day, like, I'm a homebody. I got a daughter now. She's 15 months. She's a wild animal. She's all over the yeah. place now, running around. So, I mean, being at home, being with my girls, I got three pits. They're like my children as well. And I just, I mean, I'm not out the clubs and anything. I don't, I'm not going to party. I like smoking cigars. Yeah. I mean, I keep it pretty simple. I like gaming. I go home. What play games two, are you playing right now? I play 2K. I, I play suck whoever, at I, those sports games. See, I'm a shooter. 2K is my shit. I like, I, see, I play, I play a little Fortnite, but I'm not like a Call of Duty kid. For some reason, I never grew up playing Call of Duty. So, yeah. Yeah. But besides that, I'm, bro, I'm simple. I got my tight knit family, my, my boys. I got my own podcast now, The Rush um so that's something you got to come on oh i'd love to you got to come on yeah we do uh you know we're doing doing some good shit. so yeah i'm doing the podcast and i'm really just dialed in all the time it's football routine work business yeah. work what are the business the stuff you, you got going on um i mean I've, I've i've got equity in a few different companies now um got the got the slate milk so shout out to dana oh that's fire bro it's fire yeah um, yeah it's fire so you know i got equity in that um in business in general, like I've, I've really had to, I got some good people around me. Um, I mean, Dana, Michael yeah. Rubin, those kind of guys um, that have helped me a lot as far as, you know, how to take that next step and being, you know, not just a football player, but yeah. business. Like I got my contract and shit, that's great. But like, how can I take it to another level? And that's something I'm really interested in. So like guys like Shaq and, you know, a lot crushing, of guys are bro. crushing it. Yeah. And I, I've been super interested. So last off season, I met a lot of people did a, sat down like literally went out of my way to just reach out to people hey i wanted to spend an hour with you just put me on some game so um got in with dana you know with the slate thing he helped me out and, and met you know i got to meet some good people um zen water as well yeah. um got in on them great people over there just trying to you know find different different avenues so i can stay locked in so like when i'm done i want to have 10 15 you know real estate properties and then 20 you know different businesses i'm in on so I'm not just ending my football career, and then it's like, all right, what do I do? Yeah, because a lot of guys, I, get, I don't know if the, the stats are pretty insane about people who play football and then like go broke like go five, broke. ten years later. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's they're crazy. Nuts. No, it's nuts, and that's the thing. A lot of guys wait till they're done to try to figure out what the next step is. For me, I, you know what I mean. I don't spend any other time when I'm not in the building or training. On, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going out and wasting my days or wasting my time having fun and clubbing and shit like that. My fun is like. All right, what's the next thing work. I can get better at? What's work? Like, how can I get better at my job? And how can I get in a room with a Michael Rubin? Like, yeah. I literally just hit up Rubin. I hit up Rubin for years, and I didn't even know who he was, what he did. And, you know, obviously he's as fanatics, and he's linked yeah. with all these people. I'm like, I literally I was like, can you give me an hour? I just want, I want to ask a bunch of questions or whatever. Sat down with him, and now, you know, a year later, I'm with fanatics now. Yeah. Um, he's helped me a ton and just as far as advice and learning from him. Um, and different people like that. And Dana was the same thing. Like, I literally just loved the UFC. I would go to the UFC events. Yeah, yeah. I'd show up and did my thing. And then a couple years into it, we run into each other. We meet, we talk. And then fast forward, last offseason, he's like, bro, come to Boston with me. I'm like, all right. 
So we went to Boston, went to a UFC event, went to London together, went to Miami together. And like his people at the UFC, like they're like my family now. So yeah. um, a little like that, bro. It's just about actually like starting a relationship um, and just being genuine, like not asking for shit. I never asked Dana for nothing. Like yeah. I literally just myself and, you know, we just became cool. And that's what, you know, in business now, it's it's really about just who you're cool with. Yeah, and like you got a genuine relationship, someone will be like, hey, put in 100K on this and we're going to do this. So. Yeah. That's another thing. I'm starting uh, you know, some some people over with uh, the UFC, Marty Cardova, and all those guys were, were opening a wellness center with all the recovery shit in Vegas. So oh, um, shit. that's something, yeah, that's something we're, we're about to get done too. So yeah, it's in the works, but yeah, there's a ton of shit to staying locked in and, and improving and, you know, generating actual wealth and creating an empire with all my people. That's why the podcast is another thing. Yeah. Like, I've always You're wanted to do a podcast. Shit. You're great at this shit. No, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah. But like, that's literally, I want to start a podcast. Ben wanted to do it. Started from ground zero. All my friends, like, I got my video guy who's a buddy of mine, my yeah. marketing dude, all my, like, day one boys and my college teammates from Eastern. And now, you know, we got some deals on the table and, shit, and you know, we built it up just organically. So, yeah, just staying locked in. What bro. do you want the podcast to be like? Is it, is it like a sports sort of focus thing? Yeah, so we literally, the idea kind of came from Draymond, how Draymond did, like, the yeah. post, post-game post reaction. And his was more, like, controversial yeah. type. It, he's more controversial to, that's just him in general just everyone. like all right i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna piss somebody off today but that really wasn't it for us us you know our show is we did post-game reactions but it was just like showing love you know what i mean to the other guys and show, giving recognition to some of the other rushers or other guys players around the league that really don't get that type of recognition so yeah you know we've been we literally started from ground zero with some we bought some cameras got a nice little setup and you know it's like night and day from you know the start of it but yeah, man, it's, we literally did it during the season. We, you know, got a format, got a plan, and we've been rolling with it. So it's just been getting better and better. And, you know, during the off season now, there's no game, so we're going to take it to a different level. You yeah. know, we're going to have a lot more people coming on, different guests, and not just football, but, yeah. um, you know, people like Floyd Mayweather, a yeah. friend of mine, like just different people from all walks of life. So got to have Dana yeah. on. He's, he cry, he's really oh, good on podcasts. Dana's, yeah, 100%. Him, it's just scheduling. So for We got to have you on the Full Send pod. They just brought me back as a host there. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I did Full Send last uh, last off season. It was just... Well, uh, I want to do what you want. I want, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. we have to. It yeah. was Steiny and, uh, and Kyle and the Liver King. Oh, that's the right. That was when, and, and, and Sean came on that one too, right? Yep. Yeah. O'Malley came on after. But yeah, that was when the Liver King was like taken off at that time and then yeah all the allegations came yeah what do you out think about that over. what do you think about like lying though about stuff like that i mean if you're gonna be juicing or taking shit, like we literally me and nico just talked about this yesterday yeah, yeah just be straight up about it i mean yeah. people will respect it there's a i mean joe rogan talks about it dana yeah. they're on trt and shit like that when yeah you know when you get older it's honestly as people say it's not a bad thing you know what i mean yeah, as far right. as testosterone taking a little bit in doses if your doctor agrees like okay you're a little bit low here. This is this can help you. Like, so I totally understand that. Being a player, obviously, I literally know nothing about it. Um, but like, you see a ton of people doing it. Liver King's a forty, I don't know, forty five year old man. Yeah, bro, we know you're on some shit. your abs and everything. You look like a yeah, yeah. a monster. It's like, bro, if you would have came out straight up and be like, yeah, I take human growth hormone and blah yeah. blah blah, people would be like. All right, well, nobody's surprised. Yeah, I think people but, think that saying I don't do it is going to make people look at them like, oh, my God, you're even more special. A hundred percent. But, 100%, like, but it's, a f I mean, people people don't really don't care. And I mean, if you look like that, that's not natural, bro. No. You could just tell. It's not hard to hard to just, you could spot somebody and be like, yeah, he's taking some. Yeah. No doubt. So so I, on the on the, on the, the lineman, the O-lineman, yeah. uh, who's the softest? Who's the softest O-lineman? I mean, I'm not going to. Damn, I want to know. Sorry, do that. sorry. I mean, they know who they are. When I see them, <laughs> I let them know. When I see them, I let them know every single time. So who, who's, they know who's, exactly who's who they the are. toughest? Who's the toughest? I would say. Um, by, by the way, the good job guys, not answering that question. Yeah, I'm not yeah. answering that. Yeah, yeah. They know who they are. Um, but I would say the two toughest got to be Trent Williams and uh, Panay Sewell from Detroit. Okay. They just played uh, yesterday, but those two guys, I played both of them. And they were like straight, like me and it, like it was war every play. What make what makes them what makes them tougher? They're just like the non quitting. Um, I would say that it's just a mixture. I mean, that's all the best players have that similar quality where, you know, I'm I'm the alpha. Like I'm gonna win. I don't give yeah. a f who it is. I'm gonna find a way to win. And when you got a mixture of athleticism and your strongest, 
and you're not going to give up like you put those three, three things together and it's you're going to be a great player so those two dudes like trent williams is massive yeah and a Sewell, big he's big as hell and but he's athletic and strong and he's tough as hell and yeah. there's not many guys like you know you step in the in the league everybody's really good but when the mental part of it when it really gets hard yeah. being great under duress when you're tired and feel like that's what separates the guys like myself or trent williams yeah like there's no quit in my body like i'll literally go until i physically can't go anymore yeah i always wonder like you are when you're at that level when you're playing against another team you're just like this is that guy i gotta get past him though yeah I, but you look forward to it because it brings the best out of you at the end of the day like those are my favorite matchups i love like i don't circle one guy like all right we're playing them i gotta be at my best like it doesn't matter who it is i'm gonna be i'm gonna be out there on my shit. but like there's a little bit raised sense of awareness when i'm okay i'm going against this dude's a pro bowler all pro and everyone's hyping it up all week. They're like, yeah, this is this is the heavyweight matchup. These two mother and I like for me, I I take that personal. I don't want after the game, I don't want it to be, oh, Max got locked up. Like I refuse to for that to be, you know, yeah. be out in the public. So every time I go, no matter who it is, like I, I gotta be on on point because once you get to that level, no matter what, you're gonna be either you're going to get all the love or if you don't play at your absolute best you're going to get killed yeah you know what i mean and football man the fans yeah, that's are so just, serious that's how it goes and like you could ball out too and some fans if you don't just completely wreck the game they're like oh we got his fucking ass locked up and blah 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 but that's just like a part of the internet like yeah you understand like you know at the end of the day like when the game ends like oh yeah i whooped his ass. it doesn't matter what the you know public says yeah. the other fans are always going to on you if they win the game yeah. And you didn't completely, you didn't have three sacks and be like, oh, we we stopped him and blah, blah, blah. So that's just kind of part of the game. And it's got to be, it's, it's got to be interesting though. Now, like it's different now for sure. Social media has changed so much in so many sports because there's, yeah. you have so much commentary from like, you know, you get on Twitter and people are like probably talking, saying whatever. Oh yeah, they, all the time. Is it, all how does, does that ever or affect you? When I was young, it used to, I used to read into everything and be like, oh fuck, it could be 20 good comments in that one comment. I'm yeah. like, you mother yeah um but that's just kind of what it was but as i got older like i'm numb to it like i i truly d i don't care because if if i watch the film i watch the film immediately right after the game boom yeah. all right i whooped his ass and i already know like you know what i mean so people can say whatever they want um but for me like the film doesn't lie so people could you know people are gonna have their opinions after the colts game like after the Minshew came out yeah they beat us and i didn't have a sack i had one of my better games overall like i was killing dudes out there but fans don't know that they don't know football like they don't watch the film so they won and they got saw me talking to Minshew. the whole colts every colts fan on the planet was blowing my comments up <laughs> you suck Minshew's your daddy blah, blah, blah. and i'm just laughing bro like and my friends like to a certain extent like they don't understand how it is being in that shoes like bro you good whatever i'm like bro, yeah i care less bro yeah like i know how it is at the end of the day i go to sleep with a smile on my face uh you know i put the work in and it is what it is, just yeah. part of the game. I wonder, I always wonder what it's like in the, in the like halftime when you guys are down, you're losing, you come, like, are, are people, are people mad at each other ever in the, in the locker room? Like, yo, bro, what the f it, Cause like, cause yeah, it is such a, like I said earlier, such a massive team sport where yeah. you got to do your job. If you do your job, great. You have to. Yeah. But when you know, you know, you got the, your other, the other side, whatever it be like the offense is not doing it. Are people ever like, yo, bro, what the f are you doing yeah i mean that's that's comes down to accountability i mean there's always going to be moments especially in the league it's bro you have 17 games yeah and every game matters it's yeah. not like college like where you're expected to just roll through 10 out of the teams and you know what i mean it's it's not like that so you got to be on point at all times and you need the offense to be good you need the defense the people to step up and help so yeah there's times where i got to get on i don't if it's a rookie or an eight-year vet like i've had to get on dudes and mother them if you know they're bullshit you know what i mean yeah. so that's part of being a leader though like i love being a captain being a leader because you know what i mean i've had to earn and work for that respect and if shit doesn't look right or somebody's bull they're not running the ball the right way like you know i'm not afraid to afraid to go at them but it's not like an attack you know what i mean at the end yeah. of the day you address it the way you address it and then people respond how they respond and like if guys take that as like offensively then they shouldn't even be there in the first place so yeah that's kind of how you just weed out you know the guys the that you know, shouldn't be playing. For yeah, sure. I wonder how many people are like, because you play with that injury for such a long time. I wonder how many people are just like constantly dealing with injuries. I mean, it's common. I mean, in the NFL, I mean, you see it every year. There's more and more injuries, knees, ACLs, all type of crazy. Shit. 
concussions all the time. Like it's literally you're out there. It's a full blown like head to head contact constantly in the yeah. trenches. It's every single play almost. Yeah. So it's like you can't avoid it. You know, the only way to, you know, lower your chances of getting hurt is doing all the shit I do every day. It's yeah. take care of my body the right way doing everything so I'm as flexible as I possibly can be because there could be a pile and someone fall into the side of my knee. That's probably when people probably mostly get injured too. Yeah, like, the, like the scramble type. Shit. Like yeah. not paying attention if somebody falls into you. Like that can happen, but like that's something I pride myself. Like I stretch every single night, 12, 15 minute routine. I've done it. I do it every night. If I'm on the road, if I get back at 2 a.m. from a flight, I'm stretching before I go to bed. Because like, like that, if there's been some times I'm filming, like I can show you, show you clips where I've been rolled up on or been in a weird position and if i wasn't as flexible as i am which i think separates me in a lot of ways like i could have blown my knee out many times or blown yeah. a hip out like it was a play last year where i fell like full body weight on one leg and my shit was like the average person's leg would have blown out yeah and but like that stretching and, shit and recovery like you know it helps i feel like it does like sometimes it's unavoidable like you could have a non-contact stick your foot in the ground and blow your knee out yeah that happens too but like I feel like it lowers your risk. Um, well, I know it lowers your risk if you do all the right shit every day. Yeah. Are you going to, do you plan to stay with the Raiders for good? I want to, yeah. you know, I want to retire a Raider. There's no question about that. Yeah. Um, I love being a Raider. You know what I mean? I feel like it's who I was born to be on. I feel like it fits exactly who I am. Yeah. Um, Mark and the whole, you know, front office guys, like I got a ton of love for him. You know, <laughs> recently he was a little, you know, upset with me about the whole deal that went down, but at the end of the day, like that's any relationship. There's, it's not going to be perfect, smooth sailing. And yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, just, it sounds like you just want to win. That's all that matters to me, bro. Yeah, and I want him to win. You know, yeah. that's the thing. I'm not coming from a selfish perspective where it's like, you know, I don't give a fuck. like I'm gonna get my money regardless, whatever. Like it's not that. I want to win here, and I want him to win and have success, and I want him to trust his instinct. You know what I mean? Not yeah. be influenced by the wrong people. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's really. Really what it comes down to. Did you see? Because, dude, Oakland's lost, like, they lost, like, everything. They lost all their teams. They recently lost In-N-Out Burger, left, left, uh, oh, no. did you see that? No, I The first In-N-Out ever to close, because it was, they was, like, getting robbed. People were getting robbed at, like, crazy. Wild. But Raiders, like, everything has moved to Vegas. Yeah. And Oakland's, like, lost all their teams, everything. Right? I feel bad, bro. Yeah. I mean, Oakland, when we were there, was, was rough. I mean. Yeah. I got car broken into had to get a rental and the rental got stolen straight out the parking lot. Like a rental a rental gone, Fuck. never seen again. That's like Oakland, bro. You literally, once they change the laws, um, it's just like, it's like a slap on the wrist basically to break in cars now. Yeah. So you park on the street two minutes later, you're getting run through. So yeah, Oakland was wild. I yeah. mean, Oakland was wild. It, I can't tell you my, I had a teammate, uh, Kyle Wilbur, great vet of mine. And he got a motorcycle brand new, like no, 30, that's it. Go. You can bro, pick that up. Bad motorcycle. Someone literally hopped on that and drove off a week later. He bought like forty. It was like forty k in cash or thirty. Fuck. That shit was gone in less than a week. Damn, yeah. bro. And my other teammates, I bro, I have stories on stories about just. I mean, it was all the time. Yeah, it's crazy. So, so how is it? How is it in Vegas though, overall? Vegas is it? great, bro. Yeah. I love Vegas. Like that stadium's insane. Dude. Stadium's crazy. I mean. Vegas is smaller than people realize. Like yeah. you got Henderson, Summerlin, and you could raise your kids. It's quiet, great people. You wouldn't even know it's Vegas. But yeah. then you go to the strip. You want to go have a great dinner, go gamble, do whatever. You can go 20 minutes down the road and go do it. So that's why I love Vegas because it's literally the best of both worlds. And I, I plan on staying there. Like regardless, I'm like, I just, you know, closing on a new house in Summerlin, but I plan on, yeah, staying in Summerlin. Yeah. I'm, yeah, just got a new place. So. I love it out it's there. It's beautiful, bro. Yeah. It's beautiful. I'm going to open a gym out there eventually, and I want to get a spot out there for yeah. sure. No, we definitely, we got to talk about that. We'll do some. Uh, yeah, I was going to, because when shit. you just talked about the clinic thing, I was like, I was going to do the same. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, we literally just talked. Yeah, we just got that in the works. We're going to do a, a cool wellness center and do it the right way. It's yeah. something I believe in. And that's something, too, with the business part. It's like, you don't just do it because to do it, like, it's got to make sense. And I like having shit that I actually am passionate about or that's I really it. won't care. Because it's you actually do yeah shit that like i do the stuff that you were talking about the recovery yeah. that's why all the stuff that i really have at this point in my life and the things that are most successful yeah. are all things that i really do like the yeah. gym stuff i really did it 100 percent. and i think that's how you you get things and you make them truly successful yeah because you care about it and you put your full energy into it if you don't give a f about it it's just yeah. a paycheck at the end of the day and then eventually it fizzles out but like if you're passionate about something 
it makes it 10 times better. And that's what, you know, even the slate milk, like I got slate milk now in the building. So all the guys are walking around with slate cans and having it post-workout. And now I got a part of my routine. It's in my post-workout you know, workout meal. So yeah, it just, that actually relates to what I do is, you know, it's important. So do you want to, do you want to parlay this into like some sort of commentary role? It sounds like you talk about, you mentioned people like Shaq and like, obviously yeah. he's got crazy business outside of, you know, his respective sport. Yeah. He's doing the commentary stuff. Cause I think you could like, obviously not right now. Cause your main focus is football, yeah. but is that something in your future you want to go towards? I don't think commentary is what I want to do. Um, you know, honestly, the guys that, you know, I look up to in that space is more of like, the Pat McAfee barstool type. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just being real. Like, I, yeah. I don't want to be buttoned up, having to be reading the teleprompter, like being tell, like told what to say. Yeah. That's not my personality at all. If I want to do it, it's just like anything. Like, I want to be passionate about it and be 100% myself. So, yeah, that's kind of what our inspiration was, was like the Pat McAfee. Shit. Like, he's got literally his day one boys with him. Yeah. They do their shit. They're 100% them and authentic. And people see that and feel it. So, that's literally what I did. Like all my guys on my show, it's my co-host Brogan. It's my best friend. He was my quarterback at Eastern. And then my other two guys on the show are Darian and uh, Creel. And Creel was a receiver. Darian was a uh, old lineman. And we yeah. were literally like, they're the OGs. Like when I got to Eastern, one of my official visit, these were the guys. They had the football house. They literally took me <laughs> under their wing since day one. So like I'm the youngest of the group. So these are like my like my brothers. So yeah. it just makes it ten times more fun. And you're doing work with your guys. And then and you keep it black and white, like this is what we're doing. We're not f around. Like we're still gonna do this the right way. Cause when you have your friends around, you know, people tend to like you think you get a little bit more leeway and shit like that. But like, no, like we're gonna take this to the top. Like, well, whatever level we get to, we're gonna get to, but like we're gonna do it the right way and give us you know, yeah. give us a real chance. So all my boys, like, we're all hundred percent on the same page and you know, it's been it's been a lot of fun, bro. Yeah, and I, I think I think when you do anything, like we said, from that space of like truly wanting to do it, like for the right, like even the fact that right now you're like, you would probably get the biggest bag from doing commentary. Yeah. But your your answer is I want to do it this way, kind of my way, a little bit more, just truthful to you yourself. Yeah. That's when, especially nowadays, like you see it on social media, like so much is moving away towards away from like mainstream kind of whether it be commentary, all this stuff. Yeah. Because people are way more interested, and invested in like you know, some creator who's making content about something because it's nine times out of 10, just genuinely what that person thinks, yes. not what, you know, maybe some corporation wants them to think or say. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And that's the, that's the thing. Like you see McAfee do, do you know, college game day and shit like that yeah. now, and he's doing WWE and all type of different stuff. And you see Gronkowski's now doing it and Brady, like a deal like that, where a, somebody wants to bring you in because you are who you are. And like, they like your personality for what it is. Like, McAfee goes on the shows and is 100% himself. He doesn't yeah. try to be anybody else. And something like that, I would be interested. Like, if it was a one, what, one time a week where I go on a Sunday and go talk NFL with some guys, like, I would do that for a, a business if I could actually be myself. You know what I mean? Of Not course. Be like, all right, you can't say this, this, and this, and blah, blah, blah. Like, I would, you know, I would consider something like that. I mean, there's so much money being thrown around in that space. It's unbelievable. Like, yeah. Tom Brady has a $375 million deal. I mean, yeah. <laughs> just for TV, that's more than all his NFL contracts combined. It's so crazy. Which is insane. So, like, if something, you know, obviously that's a whole whole nother level. But, like, by the time I'm done, I expect to be a Hall of Fame player. And I expect to, you know, be one of the greats to do it in my era. So, you know what I mean? If something like that comes across the table where I'm going on, on the weekends to do it. Like, yeah. I love staying busy and doing work. So, that's something that, you know, I would consider. What do you want your legacy to be? What do you want people to remember you, like, when you're, when you're, when it's all said and done? What do you want to leave behind truly? Yeah, the number one thing for me at the end of the day is legacy. Like, that's what I care about most. I want to be remembered for all the right reasons when it comes to being a football player. Um, one thing I pride myself, like, it's little, but, like, people talk about it often, but it's, like, the amount of snaps I played. Something simple as that where if I could change the game and have people really reconsider how the DM position is played, then I've done my job. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. playing 1,080. I played 1,080 snaps this year, by far the <laughs> most in my position. Like, I played 95 something percent of the snaps, which D linemen don't do, period. So, and I do it at a high level. So, if I could do that and change the, you know, change the mold of, okay, this dude is, you know, he's an animal. He's doing it every single down. He's not coming off the field and doing it at a high level. It'll make people reconsider, like, okay, maybe, like, if Crosby can do this, 
like maybe we're not doing it the right way. Yeah, we're like if kids I'm, coming up, be like, yeah, oh, you if I'm be like- coming off every other possession, like which a lot of guys do, like maybe that's a, a cardio issue or you're not doing something right in the off season. So like if I'm able to change the game and the way I play, like fly around the field, like I, I don't have no regard for my body when I play. Like I want people to look back and be like, yeah, that dude was different. Like yeah. he, you know, at the end of the day, you can look at stats and all these, you know, all the shit that comes with it. But like, it's all about the film. Like you turn on the film and watch me play compared to everybody else. I want them to say like, no, nobody's playing like that. Yeah. And so when I have coaches and other players calling me and telling me like, bro, what do you do in the office? What do you, <laughs> that's the best compliment, bro. Like yeah. every game, I can't tell you how many guys come up and how many coaches are like, what are you doing? Like, how are you able to, I'm like, I do it every day. And like, I don't just say it. I'll sit down and we could break down the whole day, the whole off season. I tell you exactly what I put in my body. But it's, you know, most guys aren't willing to do that. Like, it's the ultimate sacrifice. But for me, if I do it for 12 years, 15 years, and I look back, I'm 35 when I'm done, I'll have zero regrets. And I yeah. can do whatever the fuck I want to do the rest of my life. That's yeah. that's what I want to leave back is just have zero regrets and leave a legacy. It's like my relentless play style. I want that to make people consider, like, reconsider how the how the position is. Yeah, I have kids coming up, like, from... From high school being like, yeah, Yo, you gotta do it like Crosby. Yeah, you gotta do it like him. Like this yeah. dude, that's that's literally the ultimate that's goal. That's so cool, man. For sure, bro. So what about as a what about just as a human? Yeah. Not as a football player. Yeah, I mean as a person, the number one thing, like I wanna have a, a big family. Like I already have a daughter. Um plan yeah. on having more kids. Um and for me, you know, like I said, sobriety is number one. If I start if I stay sober, I have a chance in anything I do. Um and that's like I said, it's my superpower. So being a, you know, when I'm done or off the field or whatever, I want to be the best version of myself. It's not just being all in on football. Like I want that to translate off the field as well. So whether that's being a dad, whether that's being a business owner, whether that's being a part owner, whatever it is, like I want to be remembered as a, as a great person. Like I, every single day, like I know people say all the time, like, yeah, I want to be a great guy, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But like, it's about action. Like I, when people talk about me, I want them to, you know, remember me for being a loyal, down to earth, real, like real individual. Cause there's a lot of people that get money and they change. And that's like the biggest turnoff. And like, when I was a kid, I was like, I'll never be like this dude. Cause my mom was a waitress. Like she, I'm not going to say who she ran into when she was in Detroit when she was young, but like there's big name players that she run into. She's like, this is 20 years later. My mom's like, this mother he didn't tip me <laughs> shit. And but people and remember so that shit everywhere I go. Like this is something I got from Dana too. Everywhere he goes, he tips a lot of people and takes care of people and people in need or like, friends need something put them in a position to succeed that's what i want my you know legacy off the field to be it's like i always like i want to be a, a boss in my own right but help the people that help me you know along the way and just yeah. give them an opportunity you can hand out money but at the end of the day it literally does nothing they're going to come back and say hey i need this or hey my bills behind i want to put people in position so whether it's doing the podcast i got getting my buddies actual money in their pocket right i'm doing you know business and getting other people involved i got a photographer this kid in Vegas named Slime. He's a young kid. He's 20, 22, 23 years old. He's doing, he's editing videos. He's doing behind the scene vlogs. I'm now and now I'm getting him paid to do shoots for men's health and different shit. Yeah. Um, and just put money in his pocket. So like that's literally, you know, what I want to do. And I get a, a lot of the shit I get um off the field is like is what Dana's doing. Because yeah. the way he is with his people and how he takes care of people and just treats people the right way, it always comes back in the end. If you're an yeah. asshole, you can have success for 20 years. That's gonna bite you in the ass in the end so I, I try to treat you know from if i'm in the building i treat mark davis just like i treat hugo the janitor yeah no matter what it is i, have well, I remember when i first met you man you were so just like oh yeah what's up it's, you you weren't like oh i do this that's what i no i don't you're cool as i just try to be myself bro and i'm i'm still a kid at the end of the day i'm still growing as a person i don't try to say hey i'm perfect i'm better than you but i know like at the end of the day like i got my heart's in the right place so i can sleep at night yeah. um and that's what it's about like i said like Hugo the janitor. I see this dude every day. He's my boy. Like yeah. I treat him just as good as I treat anybody else. And like guys like that, I'll bring him to a game. I'll have him bring his family out. You know, if I, I got a suite now at the game. So if I have some random people, a fan or whatever that's a huge diehard fan, I'll be like, boom, come to the game. Yeah, first thing you told me, you're come like, yo, come out. out to a game, no problem. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but that comes back. And I truly yeah. believe in that, bro. And Gus Bradley, my old D coordinator, he said the same. Shit. Like, whatever, if you give with no intent to receive, the shit comes back twofold. And I That's truly, I truly it. live by that. No question. Damn. No question. I, 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 I just wonder when you were, when you were on your way up, like, cause this mentality, right? Did you, did you have it the whole time or did you sort of adopt it by seeing people that you saw who had success? Like 
were you did you have inspirations is what i'm saying for this yeah yeah no doubt i mean i didn't come in and you know into the nfl and have a bunch of leaders in the locker room you know what i mean it wasn't a bunch of guys i looked up to it was kind of how can i get on the level of a von miller or aaron donald or chandler jones at the time like yeah. guys like that so when i came in as a rookie i literally got on instagram i dm'd all the best players who i thought were the best players to this day von miller is like a brother to me yeah aaron donald literally like anything i need i can hit up aaron donald we just were talking yesterday yeah. like i was like i want to be at your level how the f do i get there so asking guys like that stepping outside of my comfort zone and like asking real questions all right what did you do as a rookie what did you do nutrition how are you recovering Shit like that Dude. and i just put it all together and you that's know what's crazy about that like i had the same conversation with ronnie coleman one of the greatest bodybuilders oh, of all time yeah. Yeah. he did the same shit when he came in to like yeah. bodybuilding he's like what are you doing what are you doing and yeah. he like took everyone and just like I mean, in that sport, he just dominated everybody. Yeah, for sure. But it's definitely like there's so much, there's so much game and so much knowledge to take. Yeah. Um, it seems like your your biggest piece is that just sort of mental fortitude to like just be better every single day, which is yeah. such a common thing that everyone says and everyone's yeah. like, yeah, that's what you got to do. But there's you could tell there's a difference between people who really do it and people who just talk about it. Yeah, of course you could talk about it all day. I used to be when I was a rookie or a second year guy I used to talk like. I'm going to be the best and whatever, but I wasn't actually doing it every day. That's the only way you do it is putting in the work, have discipline and do it every day. And you got to be obsessive about it yeah. at the highest level. Whatever you're doing, if you're doing bodybuilding, you're doing podcasts, you're, no matter what walk of life, if you want to be at the top of that, you have to do it every day and you have to sacrifice constantly. Like I'm in the building first every single day yeah. and I'm gone. It's dark outside. I get home. My daughter's already asleep Wednesday through Friday. Like I don't even get to see my daughter. Damn, but yeah. by Saturday, I get to chill with her and do my thing or whatever. But like, that's the unfortunate sacrifice that comes with it. But that's what it, that's what I have to do. Yeah. And I'm doing it for them. I want my daughter to live the best life possible. I don't want her ever to have a worry. Yeah. And I want to raise her the right way. My wife, we used to like, even like over a year ago, like it got to a point, my routine was so like diligent that she was like, she's thinking I hate her and I don't even want it. You know what I mean? And she's going yeah. crazy. And like, we were fighting all the time. She's like, you don't even spend any time with me i'm said yeah. listen and we sat down like state of the union type shit and i said listen <laughs> this is what we're doing like this is what i want and i'm this is not going to change and yeah. i'm only going to do more and get better and like if you want to be a part of this like i want you to be a part of this you've been with me since day one she was with me before i ever made a play in college or nothing and she played soccer like she was a star soccer player yeah. so like i she's seen it since day one and it's been a part of the whole journey i'm like listen this is where i'm going and i need you and I want you here to be a part of it, but you have to understand this is what I'm chasing and this is what I'm working towards. So we're, we will, like, I'll, I need to spend more time with you. Of course, I can be better at that, but, like, we have to be on the same page. Yeah. Like, it's not going to be easy. And I got, I literally got her the book, uh, the Tim Grover book, Relentless. Yeah. I gave it to her and I said, read this book. And Tim Grover, we ended up being, we connected. We're, you know, we're good friends now. And it fully, it's like I'm reading exactly my life. Yeah, and I have crazy yeah and it it's further solidified all right i'm not fucked up if i want to be at that level if i want to be a hall of fame you have the, to bro you have it's not easy and there's no balance people talk about you need a balance a home life when you're in it there's it's impossible i'm in the building 13 14 hours a day yeah every day that's not a balance yeah <laughs> i'm home for three four hours before i go to bed and i'm back in it so like if you have somebody in a team around you that understands that you're going to keep getting better and getting better because that's the hardest part is having people that understand it. And that's the only way you can, you know, do it and, you know, maintain it. So, so your wife, she fully understands it now? Oh, or she still have times where it's like, F there's times, I mean, there's times where like, you know, from a recovery standpoint where I'm gone 13 hours a day, first thing, Norma Tech, then I'm game ready. Yeah. And then watch a little film, I eat dinner, boom. And then I'm 40 minutes straight naps and salt bath. That's like all season long. Yeah. So it's like our time together, our window is not the same, but like, she understands it and she, she she'll take a bullet for me like yeah. legitimately she's been through everything with me my addiction she's been there by my side the whole time so it's beautiful she man. understands it and there's of course we've had ups and downs a million times but at the end of the day i always ran back to her because yeah. i knew she was genuine she didn't give a shit about money about none of that she just genuinely loves me and cares for me so when you have somebody like that that gets it it makes my life 10 times easier because i'm not worried about you know, is she in it for the right reasons? Or yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't get with her once I got in the league. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that. I, she she got with me when I had no beard. I had Eminem, oh, yeah, you said no beard? I had no beard. <laughs> I looked up. 
fucked up. I look like a little kid. No beard is hilarious, No bro. beard and bleach blonde hair. I looked all the way fucked up. Bro. And she was with me. And I had a man bun at one point. I was like 18 <laughs> years old. And she was with me then. I look at the pictures. I'm like, yeah, she's a real one. She's a real Dude, one. Dude, no beard and a man bun is oh, yeah. so comedy. Oh, it was, yeah, it was something else. So, yeah, she was with me at those times. I mean... She's in it for the long haul. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. It's beautiful, dude. Well, yeah. I love I, I love what you're doing, man. And if, if there's it, any way I can help support, I'm, I'm fully there. No doubt. And I, I mean, when it comes to the gym in Vegas, we'll, I mean, we'll definitely we talk. We got to talk that up for yeah, sure. Yeah, no doubt. But, no bro, doubt. thank you so much for coming on. It's okay. been an honor. It's been a blessing, man. You're the man, bro. Yeah, no, I you are it. you are the man, bro. Straight up. No, I appreciate it. I like it, the mentality, it. everything, bro. It's like, yeah. it's it's different. And it's always, it's always cool to talk to people who succeed at the highest levels because, like you said, it's always the same. Yeah. Everyone always has the same sort of like, you have to be a little crazy about your goals. Yeah. Like, I love what you said about balance. And at this point in your life, there can't be balance. Obviously, you want to work towards as much as you can. Yeah. But you, it just can't be balanced, man. No, it Like, can't. if you want that greatness, it can't. And I don't think anyone who ever did anything great lived in like, this is so balanced. No, it's, it's actually impossible. It's impossible. And that's the reality. There's been families torn down from yeah. not you know everybody not being on the same page and that's just the reality but at the end of the day if you got a real team and people that love each other and understand each other then you'll have a have a chance of doing it and that's literally what i'm doing right now so what what are, what, are, it. what are the things that are most important for that to work though it seems like it's communication it's all communication it's, yeah. it's literally all communication um like i said like we were in the roughest patch like once we had ella like ella got here and you know how it is it's not easy for any woman once they have a baby they feel you know are yeah. insecure they're yeah. trying to figure everything out their hormones are all over the place so like we were fighting all the time just for no reason yeah and we we're just back and forth back and forth and like we literally were going through it and it just got to a point where i'm like all right we need to sit down and let's f let's be real what are we doing yeah like how are we gonna fix this i'm not gonna do this every day we're just bickering at each other staying away from each other for no reason like like we're gonna stay together we're gonna live together we're married like let's figure it out so we're all on the same page like if we're not then we're just gonna be miserable so that's really what it came down to and uh yeah she's she's ride or die yeah no would question. you say you're more of like a traditional kind of guy what do you mean in, in the sense of like family like breadwinner yeah, take care 100%. of the yeah. my mom is like i said my mom is serbian and albanian that whole side of the family they're all very old school traditional and yeah. that's kind of Kind of what i believe in you know I, well not kind of i i fully believe in that i feel like the man is a, is a breadwinner yeah um you provide take care of your family take care of your girls no matter what it is i'm paying the bill like yeah. i take it as a sign of disrespect if anybody even a cousin or whatever like tries to come and pay a bill like like i take care of this is y'all are my in my house my city my yeah. I, I got the bill so like that's that's how i was raised and then the women you know I mean, there's been a lot of controversy. Even Strickland started that whole thing. But like, you know, I, women can do whatever they want if they want to work. The 100 percent more power to them. Like, like in my family structure, like Rachel's a stay-at-home mom. She takes care of Ella. She takes care of around the house. Yeah, makes food. Like that's just how we how we do it. And I'm I bring home. I'm working all day. I bring home the money. I pay the bills. Take care of them. Make sure she never has a worry. Make sure my family doesn't have a worry. And I'm good. But you're a good example man and for and for kids and for people who watch like just football everything aside you you definitely set a good example i appreciate it bro and it's it's an honor to have you on man honor to talk to you for yes, real sir. and i'm I proud got, of i gotta get you on the pod i'd you love to be on, on the pod yeah it'll be dope a anything you need from me man i'm, I'm always there for you no doubt because you were you were i swear when i met you you were just just you weren't like you could be you know on your stature and where you're at you could be like a dickhead yeah. not at all cool as super and just like yo come i'll give you this i'll help you with that so yeah, yeah. Even off camera, because on camera you get on here, everyone gets on camera and they say all the good stuff. Yeah. I got to let everyone know off camera, you were that same exact dude to me and you barely even knew me at that point. Yeah. I you mean, know? I just knew you through literally this podcast yeah. and, and like that, but I appreciate it, bro. Yeah. It a lot. So anything you need, man, a blessing. Thank you so Thank much man. for coming. Thank you. You brother. crushed that. Yes, sir. Thank and you, I think, brother. I think you got a, a great, a great, a great voice and a great mentality for podcasting for sure so i, I hope you take it super far no doubt thank you bro yeah man absolutely you have any questions for me or are we good i mean you know I'm, i always the only I, thing i'm surprised about was you didn't ask about us in a street fight oh because like, i asked you isn't that like strickland. your thing yeah you, I asked, well who yeah, wins the street like fight you asked yeah. everybody but i but i i did the street fight with strickland because i knew you fought strickland okay but I who wins though me or you in a street fight me you even with that yeah. busted knee Not i'll chop your knee down healthy healthy you box i'll kick you you kick, yeah, yeah, I mean, you got me with, with not, one leg. Not that you don't know. But just fully traditional, yeah, it would be. Let's, be. let's, let's, 
let's get you let's get you fixed yeah and then do a little sparring i'm with that all day i love it all day i love it huh well no no he's over oh, yeah. the pads on no yeah we gotta We're do one on one one on one you have to try ah. to block me and then we'll fight what do i gotta what do i gotta do what do i gotta do <laughs> with the pa i gotta get past you no you you would be old lineman trying to block me that's too easy bro what do you mean <laughs> You, too easy for me or too for easy me. for you? Oh, too easy for me. Uh, this I feel inter like you gotta this have interview the, is over. I feel like you got to have the crazy mentality, <laughs> this interview bro. interview is over. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. No, I'm you Josh. Bro. I'm fucking no, around. No, I'm fucking around. But, but I feel like I'll you do. have to have that crazy mentality. You have to. I mean, yeah. if you don't believe in yourself, who will? That's a fact, man. That's a fact.